We've received a lot of emails and things of that nature, but we thought it'd be good to get the group together and document um, what people are thinking out here on Fashion Island. So before we start, I just really quickly want to introduce other people here from the county. We've got Henry Perrin. Well, you want to tell them what you do, Henry? Oh, well, I think you already live? know. <laughs> <laughs> Who here doesn't know Henry? Oh, there's a Not, few. Come on. I don't know everybody here. Okay, so tell them what you do. It's um, I run the high accident location program for the county. I work on a safety program projects. Uh, Really you want me to stand up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about, because we've had a lot of stuff with the term standard and uh, guideline being used interchangeably. And uh, <clears throat> a little bit about how local agencies work with with uh, guidelines from, from the federal government and uh, also the uh, state. So. We're, we're a local agency. We're different as any city. We have our own standards. Okay, so some things from the federal government and the state are thou shalt do this. Other things are guidelines. Everything that I think you're referring to is more along the guideline end of things. So when we looked at this, uh, watched out, you 45 miles an hour. I will point out that this grant was reviewed by WASHTA, including the safety personnel, on behalf of the FHWA who issued the grant. Okay. Um, so the 45, and I, I spoke with with the state a bit about this. The 40, and the question that I asked them was, where does this 45 mile an hour come from? What what is this? Is it a cyclist issue? And I did ask that question. It's not a cyclist. Issue. It's, it's a feeling of probability of severity of impact, okay? We felt as a county, um, looking at the roads and the way that they're driven, that, and this, this applies to all six of the roads that we, that we did on this project, or halfway to this project, um, that we felt that 35 miles an hour was an, appropriate, was an appropriate threshold to start looking. There was a lot of engineering judgment that was used based on the character of the roadway. When you're standing out there, how fast are people going? Um, what, is, what is the character of the roadway? If you're going through an urban, well not urban, like, a, like downtown fashion type section. Well, we have places um, where, where those, are, those are posted about 40 and, and would not put those, no, not, not here. Uh, this, Typically, with what Washington deals with, a lot of these places where, where they have roadways that, that are close to, these are state roads that, they, that they're applying to. Okay? So because this document, all these documents are written first for the state road design, okay? state highway system. Second, local agencies can use them as reference. And there's a lot of kind of confusion gray areas with, with that type of treatment. But if you drive down a, a typical state highway, what you're going to find is most of the interland type things, and I'm talking about not, not a limited access freeway, a good deal of the interland type places are 50. Then when you come into a, a, a town area, and it may you know, not necessarily a city, but a, but a little village type thing, they're going to, their, their posted speed limits will be reduced. They're frequently not down to the, the 25 that we have here at 30. So our feeling was that a lot of that, part, part of that speed too was, was land use based. Uh, so that's, that's what we looked at. I mean, that's how we came up with that criteria. If there was a public comment period, would that have been discussed? That um, would have, I mean, with the other projects, was there a public comment period where there was a picture of the road and you said strips are going to go here and strips aren't going to go here? I mean, was, is that the way your public comment is or is it's we've got a grant, we're going to put rubble strips, here's the data that makes it safe and they're going to happen on July 5th? I mean, what level of public input would you get? Because it sounds like a lot of these things are, are judgment calls. Um, 
based on your experience, obviously, but um, the community also, I think, has experience with traffic patterns and um, safety of their own. And it's sure. bad, I guess the fashion is kind of unique. I mean, sure. this isn't like May Valley Road or... or but I also live here. here. So, <coughs> right. So I do have some first-hand experience in right. that end. Um, so to say. Do you bike here? Yeah, are you a sure. cyclist? Sure. I, I, um, um, I'm a summertime commuter. I, I'm not commuting in the dark. I'm looking forward to these because I feel they provide a barrier between the vehicles. And so, no. So, and, and, and I know yeah, there's yeah, a cool. lot of questions, so we're going to be responding to those in more detail about the speed. But for those that came a little later, the first thing Ashley put up there was that there was not enough outreach. I think you're talking about the fact that, you know, would we have comments, what would it look like, and we're saying right up front that the, the level of outreach we're saying now is, was just not enough. So. Do you, do and you that's want me to go over that? Out. I mean, because it's pretty, there wasn't much, so we can talk about it pretty quickly. <laughs> well, what I'm afraid of, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a little afraid of time, Henry, okay. because yeah. I want to make sure okay. that we get all the questions, and there's just a, a little update that I wanted to share with folks too while they're here. And I think we're gonna be told to stack chairs in five minutes. One quick question about yeah. the shoulders themselves. Have you looked at the easements? I understand that in some places the shoulder doesn't take up the full easement. Can the shoulders be widened? Did they um, look at, at Yeah, that's a good one for me to answer and, and um, that'll be quick. We actually did widen shoulders in some places in order to be able to put rumble strips there. Those rumble strips have not gone in yet. However, um, $300,000 construction budget, you burn through, I could burn through that grant and put in, I don't know, a quarter mile shoulder and not do anything else somewhere. You know, it's, it's not, this, is, this, this grant is geared towards low cost safety improvements over large distances. And so, so, so it is, I, I wanted to do that, but you know, there's just, you know. It's, there's no money, but it is. You could have striped as well. Why wasn't striping an option? Mm -hmm. There are so, there are all a whole bunch of options that do not include rumble strips that could have been spent. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll address yeah, that. Yeah, I think we have that question, but let's make sure that that question's on the yeah the other alternative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. why they weren't chosen. Sure Appendix A. <laughs> Thank you. Exhibit A. <laughs> I have a go ahead. Actually, I, did, did, I came in late. Yeah. I'm a mm -hmm. car driver. And I'm against rumble strips, but I just wanted—I don't. It sounds like a lot of cyclists are here, but I, as a dry, car driver, I'm upset with them. Why? Uh, well, because uh, when I go around to a cyclist, I have to cross rumble strips. They unnerve me, so you know I don't. I tend to now try to stay closer to the cyclist. That's not right. Nope. So I go all the way over into the next lane, and that's difficult. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of different maneuvers that I make are more difficult now with rumble strips. Yeah. I have a comment I'd like to address. And Henry just brought this up, and it was addressed in the Beachcomber today. And the rumble strips have added a divisive, you're out of my way, I'm out of your way. It's not a sharing in improvement. Okay, it's a divisive, and I would challenge anyone to say that a rumble strip protects a bicyclist being hit from behind. First of all, it's a very low probability accident, and statistics will show that, and I can bring that forward if you'd like. Secondly, by the time the car hits the rumble strip, it's over. It's not enough time to react. I don't think there's any data that would show anything different. Can I just ask if Paulette has something to say? We really would like to hear what... Yeah, what they would say yes. is we can, we've got some more time. To, to yeah, I hear, I'll, yeah, I'll get in front yeah. so you guys yeah. can hear me. I wanted to make sure that um, uh, that you know about some activity you're going to see on Vashon Highway so you're not surprised that the project is suspended. We're doing the community outreach, um, but a couple things. One is there's obviously the rubble strips down the center line and we want to get the center line marked. So we'll be doing that um, soon. Um, Jim knows we were out there sweeping quite often and we'll be continuing to sweep so you'll see that kind of activity. The other is, um, it was mentioned a little bit about the four foot minimum. 
there are locations, and I think we've seen comments from people about locations that are less than the four feet right now. And then I wanted to clear up because I think there's different um, information out there. There's two ways to deal with the four feet. This kind of immediately uh, deal with the four feet. One of them is you mail out the where the rumble strips are in that area and you pay. The other thing is that you widen the shoulder. And those are two things we're looking at of resolving that. So I just wanted to let you know that there's going to be some activity on Vashon that doesn't mean the project isn't starting up, but there's that kind of activity. Will that four foot remediation be happening without consultation? Because you, you offer two different possibilities. Um, we could certainly talk to you about that. Yeah, I I would as what we I, what I prefer to do, and it's kind of gets to that que the question that you had. What I prefer to do is widen the shoulder because I think there's a benefit in widening the shoulder for everybody. So that that would be the more ideal. And there are just there are some locations. It's not the whole stretch, but so I mean, Henry had talked about the cost of what that is right. to do a major shoulder widening, but. That would be the preferred if we could do that. If there's enough easement right away, if it's feasible, that would be the preferred. It's, I, I, it's just from the benefits of the wider shoulder. But the preferred would be to take it out. It seems important to me. If you're going to bring asphalt, then cover them and make the shoulder wider. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Well, what I want to make sure is that this, uh, we're listening to you. We've got the public meeting. Yeah. Thank you. We are, um, there's no decisions on it. So the, all this is just to make sure that we have the four foot shoulder foot out. It's not, it's not a decision on whether the project, what happens to this project. It's not that decision. It's just getting to make sure that we have the four foot. Um, but there are many places on the island that have four foot, so I don't buy that argument. But anyway, carry on. Well, <laughs> it's the intention is that that it's was the intent of the design, and to have that four feet. So there was a question that I should answer: who you should contact and direct communications to. I am your identified funnel. I've got a stack of business cards on the back. Feel free to take them, give them to others. Um, I am going on vacation. This was all planned before the rumble strips went <laughs> in. Um, but there will be someone checking my email on a daily basis and directing those emails to, to folks. Um, we are going to be busy over the next two weeks preparing materials for the open house, getting this FAQs developed. So if we don't get back to you immediately, be patient and persistent. Um, but yeah, so grab those before you leave. You I hope I brought enough. You can keep track of our polls by going to our website. I hope you yes. have. There are yes. lots of research materials yes. there and lots of input. And your Facebook page has way more fans than mine did after only like a week. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing a good job.